I differentiate this with respect to P and no, when P is equal to Q. So this is going to equal to 1 half Q squared minus P of X. So this is the Lagrangian of the classical mechanics one. So people call this action. Why? Because this is kinetic energy. Kinetic. Minus potential. You know, now it's a, all, all the, one of the main principles in, 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 in physics is either you have conservation of anything or you have some minimizing problem. It never makes sense to do minimizing problem. Why am I told them? Because this is a total energy. Total energy should be conserved. If you want to minimize something, you should minimize action. Because the potential energy is given to you, you should minimize the action. Because you have to take the integration before the action. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. I'm gonna. Yeah. So this is given to you. You have to take a difference because this is how wise you have to do that. So. So we have the minimize action function, which is exactly like let's say minimize the action function. Function, a function now. Okay. So before doing that, let, let me draw a picture because it's really really also related to optimal control theory. So it's some it's gonna be something minimizing integral from zero to t. The action function now acting on. So x is the position, yeah, my s, and q I think is the velocity, yeah, my prime of s, yes. Okay, this is me. We're gonna minimize this action function. Okay, so now now here comes optimal control theory. So I have this fun problem. I have this is time, this is space, this is at time x. So I'm at the location x Let's say I'm driving, I'm, 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 I'm driving on the road. I want to reach my destination. So for example, I can go in any way. Like I can go in a crazy way, or you know, if I'm a good driver, maybe I can go straight way. Whatever way I like. You know, there's a curve that sort of represents my driving kind of uh, part. There's a Part and there's a velocity corresponding to that. So if I, I go along this way, surely I need to pay for some gasoline along the way. Or so I have to pay for some cost. And let's say if I reach this, this destination, I, I need to pay for some terminal cost. Or some or I need to pay for some cost in order to enter the gate of the stadium, right? Anything like that. So just in it, you need to minimize the action function going from here to here. Right? This is the action function of the curve. And then you have to pay the cost to enter something. So this is the cost to enter something. Let's say I have this is gamma zero, right? And this is gamma p. So I need to pay the cost to enter something zero. Okay? So I need to do this minimizing problem. Let's say this. So this is the action function. And I know that my destination parameter. Gamma t is equal to x. I start. Okay, so that's a problem. So, uh, of course, in practice, what you want is that you know you start, you stand here. You want to divide, you want to devise a clever way so that you don't want to go large. But you know, so you can move this way so that you that way. You know. But it's too much. You know. It's kind of like, it's too much to find the correct part from the beginning or something like that. It's too complicated. So there's a very clever idea by Richard Bellman in the 50s saying that, okay, maybe it's too much to consider each individual curves and stuff like that. Why don't we consider the cost function? So that, you know, let's say I know that at this point I know how much cost I need to pay to go to have my desire, you know, uh, to, 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 to solve a problem, to, you know, to have a desired solution. So
So Richard Bellman suppose that we suggest that we should define this one to x t to be this one. So this is the cost function. So in some sense, we are not at the at the microscopic level, the Lagrangian level anymore to look at the curves, but we look at the cost function. Value. Value. Well, you know, in economics they call it design of functions. Okay. So that's the kind of idea of Bauman. So it's sort of like we, we zoom out, we look at the level. And then, you know, the idea is that, okay, we're going to find something. Let's say what you satisfy and so on and so forth. And now maybe later on we can come back and do some numerics to not really get the correct optimal part to get something close. Okay, so now, okay, now I clip. But but in the 50s, actually, people in optimal control already know that this is interesting. But it's always the case that they need to assume that you is smooth, which is not correct. You at most is vicious. So you is not smooth. Um, at most. So in the 50s, people in optimal control theory always assume you are smooth, which is not correct, and that makes the gap. And, and, and the one who closed the gap was Phil Lusbio, so he proved that U is the viscosity of the solution of the common center of the temperature. U T plus H and B U equals 0, Rm times 0 infinity. So H is the duality of this L from that formula, I'll do it. And then U at zero is U zero X. This is given to me. So this is the proof that is exactly the viscosity So that means, you know, it's sort of correct. Okay, so let, let me give you a sketch of proof. I'm gonna leave one part not being done previously, and then I'll ask the ones like most of them. Uh, undergrad from uh, master students to do it in the afternoon, which is kind of fun. Okay, scan it. So it's always the case in optimal control theory or dependent uh, on differential games that there's some kind of minimizing principle of this problem, which is called dynamic programming principle. Dynamic programming principle. So DPP in soft, DPP in soft. One we can prove the dynamic programming principle is sort of that. Because this is a minimizing problem, it has some kind of properties like that. Okay, what do I mean by that? Okay, so now look at the problem. Now let's say, assume that I can have my optimal part. Let's say, assume that this is my optimal part that goes me the least. So assume that I go, oh, not going down to zero level, to, to time zero. But I, I just go down to some smaller time, this is time B. If I just go to time t minus epsilon. Now, I have the optimal part crosses here. Now I ask myself, if I go from here, what is my optimal part to go down here? Can I have the less? So this should be my optimal part because, because you know, of course there might be more than one part, but from here, for example, if I claim that I have an inferred part that the yellow one costs less than the blue one, then at the beginning I can go like this to have the less cost. Right? Because this is the same and this yellow is less than blue. Right? So that means this grid, uh, this yellow must cost at least the same like this or more. So that's the dynamic programming principle. So I have uxt is the inf. If I go 
gamma t equal to x. If I go all the way to gamma t minus epsilon, you So this is a dynamic programming principle saying that you know, if you do less and if you start to come again, it's too yeah, the correct one. It can't cut less than that. This this is this is actually the proof. You can actually you know do do it by doing F1 down that proof again, this dynamic programming principle. But that's a quick yeah. Any other curve, yellow one or white one, should cost at least equal or more than the blue one. Okay, so now I'm going to rewrite a PE from this. Okay, so this is heuristic derivation. Derivation. Heuristic means uh, not, for, uh, not formal, not rigorous. For some of you who are not used to this term. Uh, from DPP, from dynamic programming principle. Okay, so I'm going to ask some of you to try to do this during lunch time later to prove rigorously for the students who are interested. Okay, so I'm going to prove this thing. Well, keep in your mind that if gamma t is equal to x, what is gamma dot of t? Gamma dot of t is a velocity at the starting point, you know, you can do whatever you like. Okay. Do anything, right? So gamma dot of t can be anything. Now I'm going to subtract this one here. So subtract, put the left onto the, the right onto the left. So subtract. So in going to be soup. Soup of gamma t to the x of u x t minus u gamma t minus epsilon t minus epsilon minus integral of t minus epsilon to t l gamma s gamma dot S T S is equal to zero. 